costing around 6.5 million to assemble and the only player unavailable for selection was Stuart Munro so John Brown will start the match at left back where he began his senior professional career at Hamilton and wearing a number 8 jersey is 21 year old Ian Ferguson playing his first competitive match of the season after being injured playing against Bordeaux pre-season and he'll be very keen to justify his £800,000 plus transfer fee from St Martin last season Celtic 2 appear to favour a 4-4-2 formation with Derek White on the bench and Aiken and McCarthy in central defence. Billy Stark's experience is preferred to the potential of young Joe Miller who's the second Celtic substitute. That is a brand new experience for Ian Andrews, the only Celtic man playing in his first Old Firm match this afternoon and he's likely to have his nerve tested very early on. For the referee, Kenny Hope, one of Scotland's highest rated officials landing his sixth Old Firm match as Celtic get the match underway in the midst of the most incredible atmosphere it's been said many times before but I've certainly witnessed a vast number of Old Firm matches and the atmosphere in the half hour building up to the start of this match really was something special so conditions will be treacherous because it's wet underfoot there have been squally showers all morning and it's blustery overhead so there could be problems particularly for defenders and for goalkeepers in particular Chris Woods of course has been over the course many times before he's opposite number Ian Andrews though very keen I'm sure to get his first touch of the ball there's Mick McCarthy and the throw goes to Rangers on the far side there's Gary Stevens, his first old firm match along with Kevin Drinkle chesting that down for Durant good play by Durant and as he goes down there are fierce appeals for a foul the challenge came from Anton Rogan the referee Kenny Hope right up with the play indicating that, that was a dive by Durant so the ball is out on the far side and it'll be a throw to Rangers that's a very interesting early moment the tackle came from Ian Ferguson a very heavy one at that and the referee is having a war with Ferguson the Celtic players protesting fiercely to referee Hope Ian Ferguson crunching into Peter Grant you see as the ball came across here was Peter Grant Ferguson was clearly late totally committed and that was certainly a bad tackle by the young Rangers number 8 so Mick McCarthy's free kick Butcher going up with Walker Durant with the clearance to keep the ball in play so it's a throw on the far side with Celtic having the chance with wind assistance now to keep the pressure on Ian Durant organising his teammates uh, marking capacity Mark Walters he was calling to and the wind has freshened behind Celtic Oh, the ball coming across goal for Butcher's header that's off the post there's McAvenny Celtic are in front Troy for Frank McAvenny with five minutes on the clock and the Celtic end goes wild Peter Grant had the original shot but hits the post Chris Woods appeared to see that late well, what an opening from Celtic the league champion starting off Richard Goss clear is finally high there Butcher's header Grant with the shot off the post back to McAvenny for that deadly finish and Celtic take the lead push in the back by Aiken on the coist it looked though as though both players had misjudged the flight of the ball there's Kevin Drinkle of this experience an old firm match first time in his career Ray Wilkins will take the free kick Goff is in the box once again so is Butcher back to Brown blocked by McCarthy there's McCoy deadly finishing by Ali McCoy ten minutes gone Rangers are back 
back on Tams and that was top class striking McCoy savouring the moment as are the Rangers fans but the aerial power of Rangers butchering cop causing all the problems this dropped to John Brown a powerful volley was blocked by McCarthy rebounded back across the face of the box to Ali McCoy that drilled left foot shot left Andrews helpless. Ali McCoy is continuing his magnificent scoring record against Celtic. And what a start to the first Old Firm match of the season. Ten minutes gone, one apiece. And now it's the Rangers fans who are making themselves happy. John Brown hopes for one forward McCarthy's given that straight to McCoy he's away from Aiken still McCoy and superb play from Ali McCoy now clearly complaining about the tackle by Roy Aiken it certainly appeared to be a foul but an error by McCarthy cashed in on by Ali McCoy well look at the way he takes on Aiken Aiken certainly appeared to impede him the referee gave the advantage, which I think was the right decision, and McCoy's under pressure, blast the shot wide. And now McCoy is being spoken to for the descent. Perhaps Ali McCoy's looking to have things both ways. He wanted the shot at goal and then wanted perhaps a second opportunity from a free kick. It's one for Maquette McAvenny to chase, which he does as willingly as ever. Couldn't keep it in play though. He was policed all the way by Terry Butcher. But it will be a Rangers throw. Butcher settling into the heart of the Rangers defence. That's Brown with the throw again, looking for McCoy. Head flick finds Durant on the run. Walters is free over on the right. Good tackle by McCarthy. Brinkle running into trouble. Here's Paul McStay. Impeded by Wilkins. Paul McStay trying to play a 1-2 with McAvenny. Taken out of the play by Wilkins and it'll be the English international who'll be the first player in the match to be booked. It was fine play this from Paul McStay. And Ray Wilkins cut out here as McStay released the pass. Wilkins blocking the run blatantly there from McStay. Morris, fouled by Morris. But Brown will take the free kick. Hoisting that towards Richard Goff, who wins it well for Rangers. Kept away first time by McCarthy. Goff in return to their spring call. Good handling by Andrews. Will do him a lot of good early in the match, a fine save. The high ball knotted down by Goff, the clearance by McCarthy, return first time by Ferguson, Brinkle turning for the grounder which Andrews took very well indeed. McAvenny now to Barnes, as Walker through the middle. Barnes again, this is Paul McStay, the momentum for the moment is gone for Celtic. Chris Morris now joining the attack. Here's Walker. Now Barnes. Barnes charging into the box, committing the range of defence. And that was superb play from Tommy Barnes. Bringing out that excellent tackle from Terry Butcher, but so positive. Saw no pass on at the edge of the box, committed the Rangers defence, invited anyone to make a rash challenge on him, and then brought out that fine tackle from Butcher. Barnes himself will take the corner kick. Coming back from Gary Stevens to Barnes. Our first ball, Woods is committed, he's in trouble. And a goal kick to Rangers, but an anxious moment there for Chris Woods. He made up his mind early on to go for that. There was Barnes, it was a fine cross, a very difficult one for the keeper. He didn't make it, and the header went wide. 
Well taken down by McCoy, holding off Rogan. This time the referee's whistle has gone. McCoy showing what remarkable strength he has when he's in possession. A very solidly built young man hustling there with Rogan who couldn't force him off the ball without committing the foul. John Brown going across. Deadly from set pieces around the box. Too far out for the direct shot. That's Ian Ferguson. Walters taking the ball to the byline. Looping it back in for the first time. Shots! Harry McCoist. Frustration for the Rangers striker. But he can have no qualms about the quality of the strike. Mark Walters doing so well after Ferguson played that into the box. The first time shot in the volley, a perfect view. It's only about six inches wide. It's a cross hitter. Durant doing well. He is Brown at the back. There's Aiken. Goff. Going forward to Wilkins. Being knocked there from Barnes after the ball had gone. Apology offered by Barnes. Here's Mark Walters. In goes Ferguson, met right away by McCarthy. It's back now with Durant. That appeared to be handball. And a very tough late tackle by McCarthy. And that wasn't called for. Ian Durant, to his credit, making light of it. He had already been penalised for handball. Brian McCarthy came crunching in late. Let's take a look at this. Handball there by Durant. Now look at this tackle from Mick McCarthy. Sailing through the challenge after the ball had gone. McCarthy protesting vehemently. He will cut no ice with referee Hope. The decision has been taken to book the Republic of Ireland centre half. And the referee appears to have done a good job in calming McCarthy down. As Aiken. Stevens and Goff in a bit of a tangle. Goff sorted out for Rangers with help from Stevens. Walters got a touch. Now it's Rogan for Celtic. That's a good ball from Stark. His first touches have been very effective today, and that with a calculated foul by John Brown, which I'm sure will result in action from the referee. Chris Morris taken out of the play in calculated fashion here. Now you see Morris got to the ball first, knocked it beyond the Rangers fullback, who just eased Morris to the ground. Ten minutes remaining in what has been a tremendous first half. The match as evenly poised at the scoreline. Benny and McCoist cancelling each other out. Early goals. Morgan playing it out for the throw. Being careful to avoid a corner kick. Goff and Butcher have gone up. It's launched in field by Stevens. There's Butcher. Back with Wilkins. Absolutely magnificent from Ray Wilkins. Ten minutes to half time. And a goal which Ray Wilkins will never have bettered in an illustrious career. Dean Andrews had not a hope. Terry Butcher, the stunning volley from Wilkins, and Andrews scarcely moved. There's Richard Goff, that goes back to Butcher. Stevens. And there goes the half time whistle. An absolutely outstanding first 45 minutes. Peppered with excellent football. The culmination being the second goal for Rangers. So Rangers get the second half underway. The fans having the interval to have a break and reflect on what was an incredible first half. Leaving Rangers in front and that's just about what they deserved over the piece. They had an edge, certainly from the time when Ray Wilkins got that second goal. They looked to be just a little bit better. Derek White has been introduced to the fray by Celtic for the second half. 
and the absent player is Tommy Bonds. Well, that involves some reorganisation for Celtic, and I wonder if Bonds was carrying a strain or a knock. It's headed on by Rogan. Here's Durant retrieving it for Rangers. McCoy nods it on, an awkward one for Andrews. And the ball is in the net. It's a goal for Rangers. Durant takes the credit. But it's a disaster for Ian Andrews. Well, that coming about in the most surprising fashion as Ian Durant retrieved the ball. It certainly was a very difficult ball played and it was Ali McCoy who must get the credit. It was his back header. Dipping under the bar, misjudged by Andrews, Brinkle didn't touch him, and McCoy gets the credit for the second goal, and Ian Andrews really has had a major setback in the Celtic game. So what a start to the second half. Ali McCoy is clearly just trying to nod that into the danger area, but it drifted and dipped in the wind under the crossbar. So Celtic now, who clearly knew they had a very tough task at any event, 2-1 behind, now facing a two-goal deficit, and these exultant Rangers fans. starting the second half with a bang look at the way Trinkle got in behind Aiken Aiken having to be very careful about conceding a penalty and Trinkle's shot under pressure goes over Butcher Durant headed by McCarthy here's Chris Moss Overshooting McStay, good play by Butcher. Led in by Durant for Walters. Superb control. And no penalty kick. Derek White brings the ball clear. The Rangers fans very upset indeed about that. And that, for my money, is a major let off for Celtic. Well, as the ball was played in here chance to see Mark Walters at his best now look at the control here from Walters taking on White now that for my money was a foul well let off for Celtic as Joe Miller comes on so let's see in all this activity who has gone off it looks as though it's well they start who's been withdrawn Celtic have to become totally adventurous if they're to save the match. Wilkins to Brown. Wilkins again. Wilkins on Brown. Here's Paul Wilkins. Here's McAvenny with Walker. Celtic so dangerous on the break. Walker needs support. Now checking inside himself. He's done very well retaining possession. Grant now finds Rogan. Two players to face, Wilkins and Goff. Breaks off Ian Ferguson to McStay. Tackle came from Ferguson, good one at that. Winkle coming straight into the Going up well with Drinkle. The arrival of White into the Celtic ranks, allowing Rogan to push into a more orthodox left midfield role, replacing Tommy Barnes, who went off at half time. Applies to Walters. Walters now 
Regine McCarthy getting in a fine cross Judging the fight well, Earth Brown. Aiken in trouble, there's Ellie McCoist. There he goes this time, but Walters! Mark Walters makes it five! And the day worsens for Celtic. A dreadful error this time by the captain, Roy Aiken. Some very intelligent refereeing, resisting the temptation to blow for a penalty kick to allow the advantage rule. And here's Aiken in a fankel, McCoy's driving into the box. Under pressure now from Aiken, foul there, the referee allowing play to continue, Walters following up. And there's the fifth goal for Rangers. of a foul on Chris Morris I think yes Walters will be booked there's the enclosure with the Rangers fans I'm sure even the most optimistic could never have believed a scoreline like this and they intend to enjoy the occasion to the full the Celtic end for the moment muted Was McAvenny that certainly wasn't far away McAvenny finding space in a crowded box all well, the Rangers defenders will be asking questions about how McAvenny found that space for the downward header wide of the target uh, wait to hear the ovation for the Rangers player manager Graham Souness Ian Durant will come off Remsen is signalling to the referee. Waiting for the linesman to check the boots. Off goes Durant. And there will be an incredible welcome, I'm sure, for Graham Sunnis as he comes on. The roar of Greek Sunnis. And back by Fergus, not a knock in his right ankle. Still on the ground as Wilkins fights for it in the midfield with Grant. This is Drinkle. Fergus is still on the ground. Well, it was a major blow to Rangers. He looked as though he was coming right back to form, Ian Ferguson. Butcher. And there's Drinkle chesting it down. Came off David Cooper. The referee not prepared to stop the match to allow treatment for Ferguson, who's on his feet now, rather unsteady looking there he is at the front of the picture and there goes the final whistle Rangers the winners by five goals to one and the happiest day perhaps of Graham Souness managerial career the Rangers fans stand to applaud Souness enjoys the moment of the full and waiting a long time for this 
for 5-1 the final score and after Rangers had completed their warm down Jock Brown spoke to some of the players at the heart of the action Mark what are your impressions of that match? Oh superb um, just like I said the fans were unbelievable it's an uh, experience I've never experienced in my life and uh, hopefully we'll, in the future we can have it again you made some contribution to the Rangers win yourself of course with the cross for Kevin Drinkle and your own fifth goal what do you recall of these? Um, not very much really, I mean the old game basically flew flew by quite quickly, basically I uh, got to the byline, whipped the ball over for Kevin, uh, my own goal it basically um, uh, McCoy went through and it basically broke to me and I was luckily in the right place to just slot it on. Do you think things are now going right for Rangers collectively? Hopefully yes, I mean obviously there's a long way to go yet, uh, if we can stay clear of injuries and suspensions and so forth, I'm very optimistic, I'm you know, very confident at the moment and hopefully we can carry on as we did today. Kevin, your first all for match, what were your impressions? Obviously the crowd, I think the occasion itself, uh, and winning, which was great, you know. Now you scored the fourth goal, how do you remember that one? Well, I think it built up down the right hand side and uh, Mark has done brilliant on the ball, whipped in a great cross and he just now put my head on it and it flew in the corner. You look particularly pleased about it at the time. Obviously, I mean, that's uh, the reason, one of the reasons I've come here, obviously, to play in these big games and to score in it, you know, elated. Now there's some discussion I know in the dressing room with Ali McCoyst about the third goal just after half time when it came in under the bar. You were right beside Ian Andrews. What do you remember of that? Well, it, it was a low cross, I think, and uh, Coyster has got a little back header on it. It's looped up in the air. I have to jump with the keeper, uh, made sure I didn't foul him, like, and I think he's just uh, tried to tip it over the bar, but it's gone under the bar. Ray, the second goal this afternoon, one which we'll certainly remember. How does that rank for you with the goals you've scored? Well, they don't come. Uh they don't come too fast for me anyway. It's, uh, it's nice to get on the score sheet. Isn't it? It's launched in field by Stevens. There's Butcher. Back with Wilkins. Absolutely magnificent from Ray Wilkins. We had Dundee here on Wednesday night and we've got to keep pushing forward and winning every game we play now. We have a squad now that I feel is capable of going the whole way and everything we, we play for. Graham, the dust has settled. It's a while since the final whistle. Do you reckon now that's the best Rangers performance since you came here? No, I think we've. Um, it's, hard, it's hard to play a lot of football in these games, Scott, because there's so much passion involved. What I will say, I thought it was an absolutely tremendous game, a tremendous effort for Scottish football as a whole. Um, if you could have shown the full 90 minutes live throughout Britain, I mean, what, what an effort that would have been for, for Scottish football. You yourself Both seem teams to be. contributed. That was, that, yes. was a, that was a great game. But you seem particularly happy yourself. You're reacting in a dugout a way you don't normally do coming onto well, the track. Right? You were, right? You'll remember that. <laughs> Um, no, I enjoyed it today, obviously. Um, our team were, were positive and we played well today. He scored some fine goals. Some well-worked goals, yeah. We, we, we looked nervous for the first 10 minutes for some reason. And once that settled down, and even with Celtic scoring first, um, we got the goal back reasonably early. And um, after that, I was always confident. I thought they played extremely well today. They're positive, you know, they, they, looked, they looked hungry. And... Um, with it patting ourselves on the back, they looked organised. I was delighted today the way they played. And the goal we may show a few times is Ray Wilkins. What a goal that was, yeah. Um, I don't think you see a better, better struck goal this season than that. The third goal, just on the half, just after half time, seemed to be very important indeed. Yeah, Chris, Chris Woods, our goalie, had said that the, the wind was swirling out there. So um, their goalkeeper would criticise for that, but the, the, the wind was swirling because our, go our goalkeeper, for me, is the best there is on crosses. And um, he, he looked to be in trouble a wee bit in the first half of the couple. You're suggesting Ali McCoy's tried that bike header? Um, you ask Ali, he'll tell you he did. <laughs> you know Ali. Sure did. But from there on in, you seem to control the game very well. Yeah. What is the big difference this season, do you think? Well, the big difference this year is that we've got our best 11 players. Or, to be fair, we've two or three on the fringes that, that are good, and good quality players as well. But today we had um, 11 um, quality players that I regard as near enough my best side on the pitch today and if we stay much longer we're going to get stopped. <laughs> Indeed that's You couldn't resist coming yeah. on at the end could you? No, well, um, I intended not to go on but um, we Durante said he was feeling something and if you don't mind coming on at the end. Of course they can't do.